and then I'm going to be preaching, and then the, actually, yeah, worship, and then I'll talk about, or, yeah, I'll talk about the announcements of what's happening for the month or the next three months, what things are happening. And then after that, I'll be doing my sermon. And then from there, you guys can hang out, chill. I don't mind if you guys bring your guys' um, DSs or your switches as long as you're not playing when the service is happening. Um, and if you have your own personal things, I'd... I don't mind as long as it's not affecting your being at, at worship. So if you have your fidget spinners or your things, I don't care as long as you're not distracted right when the service is happening. So I just want to say thank you um, as you guys are coming. We're going to have our um, worship team up here and we're going to be um, starting worship. So I think they're still talking. So. Uh, how was everyone's uh, week? Pretty good? Not bad? Thanks. We got some conversation. But um, I guess I'll just do the announcements right now then. Next, um, next, at the end of the month, I believe it's on the 27th of November, we're going to be doing a worship night. And so what that's going to look like is we're just going to be doing worship. We're going to be worshiping and we're going to be praying. So all of you guys that love to sing, all of you guys that love to pray, that's the day we're going to be doing it. On the last Sunday of this month, we're going to be having our worship team. I'm going to give a short word and then um, we're going to be worshiping until 8 o'clock. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be great. Why? Because as Christians, I mean, we worship a God that hears. He, he hears, he sees, he's alive. And so when we worship, it's pretty cool because of the fact that when... Um, the people of Israel would be going out and battling. Um, that's what, who was in front of the armies. It was the people that sang. It was the people that worshipped. So on the 27th, I believe, that's when we're going to be having our night of worship. So I hope you will in, um, come on that day and be a part of that. On Sunday, the um, 27th, September 27th, that Sunday. Also, we have on the front... If you want to get a newsletter for your mom, it has the up three months of what's happening at The Rock. So it has what's happening next month and even on our, um, I guess, November. So just recently we had our September, I mean, not September, we had our Zoom taskmaster. Our, we have our champion. She's here today. She won, got the whole W, beat out everyone else, and that was her first time there. We have some pretty cool prizes, so I hope you guys can be able to join on the next time we have the Taskmaster, because the more people come on, that means the more fun we get to experience. <laughs> um, and so I encourage you guys to be looking out for that. We just recently had our Zoom Taskmaster um, edition, and that was yesterday. What's happening next is we're having, in October, we're going to be doing a large bingo. And so what's going to be happening is if any students wants to participate, we will have a card that you can get from the service or we can mail it to you. And if you um, get it through the whole month of October, if you get five in a row, you can get a prize. The first three that turn in five in a row gets their prize. Or if you black it out, which will get a bigger prize, a more expensive prize, if you black out your whole bingo and you're the first one to bring it in. So I'm super excited for that one because it's going to be intense and crazy and fun. So what you would do is if there's a task, for example, like um, buy your friend a Dutch Bros drink, you would have to take a picture of the Dutch Bros drink and your friend giving it to them. And that's your proof of stamping it on top of the bingo card. Another one would be, a, for example, like um, you could be wash the dishes at your mom's, I mean your parents' house. And it'll be like showing yourself washing the dishes. That would be, and taking a picture of that, showing proof that you actually did it. So it's just a lot of fun, exciting, encouraging things. Because it's October and it's creepy October. So we're going to do something encouraging. Um, but, and then in November, we're going to be doing, hopefully, if the COVID thing is all gone, we're going to be going and doing our Rocks Giving Bowl. So we will have our football. Um, we're going to try and rent out the St. Helens High School football field and play flag football again and see which team wins out on that flag football and then eat a lot of 
Thanksgiving food. Now, if we have to still do COVID, then we're going to do something else. It's probably going to be something modified, but hopefully we can figure out something fun and exciting. And for all you Pokemon fans, we'll be having our game night for our Pokemon tournament in November. So be on the lookout for that. Be making your decks. Be making everything. Are we good, sound crew? All right. Hey, worship team, if you guys can come up, we're going to pray and we're going to jump into our service. So if you feel free, if you feel like, you know, you want to stand up and um, worship, I encourage you to stand up, worship with us. If not, you can relax, chill, and enjoy our service today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you, God, that you are a good, good father. So, Father, I invite you into this place. I ask you that you would move in our hearts, our minds, our spirit, Lord God, that you would be the king of kings that, you, that I know you are. And so, Father, we invite you, Holy Spirit, to just move as we worship in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. How are you guys doing? I got one. That's all I need.
Don't be afraid to applaud. Praise the Lord.
want you guys to close your eyes. Worship team, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. One more time, keep it going. One more verse, one more verse. I want you guys to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Listen to the words. Upon your love, it is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I this time of so much unrest that's what my God does when you put your trust in God when you put your trust let me put it in even clearer when you put your trust in Jesus when everything around you starts to shake you're not moving you're looking at your friends and your family and you're recognizing everything else is shaking but because you're standing on the solid rock which is Jesus they're looking at you and they're going, why are you not moving? That's so amazing. I love this song because it hits that part of what my God can do when the world is going crazy that you can still stand and say, I still find joy. I still find peace. I still find rest. When everyone is saying, I, can't, I don't know how we can live at this time. I don't know what's going to happen. I feel so unrest. My jobs are disappearing. But I can look at them and say, I'm at rest. Because my faith is not in my job. My faith is not in this or that. But it's on Jesus Christ who cannot be shaken. So let's pray and we're going to be diving into the word of God. And so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that you are a good, good Father. We thank you that we can put our trust in you and know that it's not going to um, turn void. It's not going to come back at us and bite us. It's not going to hurt us. But we can place our full trust. We can surrender and get onto your feet and say you are master and know that we are safe that we are secured. And so, Father, I ask that you would come into this place, that you would fill this place up, Lord God, that they may know that you are a good, good Father. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And so today, my sermon series is called Power of Christ. Oh, no, Grace of Christ. I'm so sorry. Grace of Christ. And so if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Luke chapter 7. And don't worry if you do not have your Bible. If you did not bring your Bible, relax. We have a giant Bible. You can just look up at the screen. Uh, no? Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys, we have, we're going to be doing a drive-in movie night. Just FYI, people online, thank you for being here. But we'll be having our drive-in movie night. That's going to be happening in um, actually in October, I think, yeah, Sunday, October 25th. And then if you didn't know, we are going to be starting up our Rock Zoom meetings. And so if you're interested, please sign up online. You can find that at CR, um, CRFC Foursquare, or it's on, the, it's on our um, main page. But you can sign up. There's a guys and girls group, and we're going to be doing Alpha this year. And so I encourage you to sign up if you have questions about Jesus or the cross or Christianity in general. Um, I encourage you to sign up. We have some amazing leaders. Matt Huck is leading one. And then we have Audrey and the other girls that will be leading the other. And so I encourage you to sign up. Be a part of that. That's starting um, not this week, but the next week, the following week, we're going to be starting our Alpha Zoom meetings. And so I hope you can be a part of that. 
Um, next, we're going to be at the end of this month, the last Sunday of this month, we're going to be having our worship um, night. So how many of you guys like the worship? Did you enjoy it today? Yeah. Thank you, James, my hype man. Thanks. Um, yes, we really enjoyed it. So thank you, worship team, for doing that today. It was pretty crazy trying to set that up. But look, they got it together and they're ready for you. Um, but yes, we, at the end of the month, we're going to worship. We're going to praise our God. So I hope you can be there this at the end of the month. Um, again, I talked to you guys about a um, rock ministry bingo. So it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of cool prizes, um, and a lot of, you know, connecting with people. And so we're going to be jumping into the word. Today we're in Luke chapter 7, verse 36. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn all the way to Luke chapter 7, verse 36. And we're going to start to read. And it says this. If you look in your um, Bible, it probably says Jesus is anointed by the sinful woman or um, something like that. And so it says this. Now, one of the Pharisees invited Jesus. We're reading God's word right now. So, now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was entering at, um, sorry, eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. Verse 39. When the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Verse 40, Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men owed many uh, money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he canceled the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon, the Pharisee, replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said, verse 44. When he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into her house. And you did not give me any water for my feet, but she wept, um, she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did... Oh, I'm so sorry. This is the part I forgot to do. <laughs> Next time, can someone just say like, hey, Abel, you got to turn the slides. Or was it turning? Oh, thank you, guys. Um, sound crew, you guys are the man. Verse 45, you did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has stopped kissing, um, has not stopped kissing my feet. Verse 46, you did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Verse 47, therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much, but he who has been forgiven little loves little. Verse 48, then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. 49, the other guests began to say among themselves, who is this? Who even forgives sin? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So we see two protagonists. We see one, Simon the Pharisee. And then two, this woman of the city. Which some translations actually, the, when it says woman of the city, it means prostitute. A person that um, goes out, yeah. So this woman was around the town. But both were seeking Jesus. Both were seeking Jesus. Well, Abel, how so? Well, this Pharisee, remember, it's a Pharisee. At that time, Pharisees did not like Jesus. They didn't like what he was teaching. They didn't like what he was doing. They didn't like Jesus. 
So for this Pharisee, Simon the Pharisee, to invite Jesus into, their, into his house, it meant something. It meant something. It's like this. It's like someone that's like, hey, um, like a, that, that shows off that they're a Republican or shows off that they're a Democrat or shows off that they're a Biden fan or shows off that they're a Trump fan. This person, this Pharisee was basically saying, hey, look, Jesus, I know Jesus. Jesus is coming over my house. It's like knowing a famous person and then inviting that famous person to your house and them coming to your house. That's what it was happening right here. This Pharisee was, was one, he was, he was actually going out there and saying, hey, I'm going to, I don't care what the other Pharisees think, but I want you to come over to my house. So we see two, both. Both people interested in Jesus. Both approaching Jesus in two different ways. But did you know only one was accepted? Only one was accepted and the other rejected. When Simon the Pharisee invited Jesus into his house, he physically was kind of like, hey, I want, I want you to be associated with me. You got to think of this time. It's kind of like someone saying, hey, Trump, come over my house. And everyone's like, oh, they're either yeah or they're like, ugh. But it would be like in that area. The only other Pharisee that actually invited Jesus to their house was Nicodemus. But what did Nicodemus do? He actually invited Jesus secretly. He didn't do it publicly like Simon the Pharisee did. He did it secretly. So he was like, hey, Jesus, come over at night when everyone is actually sleeping so I can learn a little bit about you. But this Pharisee did it openly. He didn't want to lose, um, Nicodemus didn't want to lose his, his prestige or his honor, so he did it secretly. And so it, this is a big thing when Simon the Pharisee invited him, Jesus, to the house. And so what, I, I kind of was like wondering, okay, so if this, Simon the Pharisee invited this person over. And we read that verse about Simon kind of going like, if Jesus knew this woman was a prostitute, like what was the prostitute doing at Simon's house if he was so judgmental? Well, back in that day, um, I think I have a picture right there. Back in the day, it was something kind of like this. When a Teacher would come to a person's house. It wasn't like our house. It wasn't like you come into my house and nobody, nobody, whoever wasn't invited couldn't see. Back then when there was there, there was a lot of open spots. He would place the teacher in an area where people can actually see the famous person that's in their house. Why? Because it's a power thing. They wanted people to see that this famous person, this whoever is associated to me. It's like, I don't know, whoever, think of your most famous person, the person you want to meet, that famous person, and they coming over your house. You don't want to be like, uh, yeah, come in. Uh, no, I won't do any Facebook. I won't do any Instagram. I won't even take pictures. No, this is like, this is their way of filming each other and showing it off to everyone. This is their way of putting it up on Facebook. This is their way of putting it up on Instagram. This is their way of saying, look at me. Check me out. So anyone could be walking down the street and anyone could be listen, were able to listen in to the teachings of whoever that prominent teacher was. At this one, Simon Peter had Jesus there in his house reclining. And if you look at it, you notice there's a lot of people moving. Why? Because at that time, there was a lot of servants moving around, serving the, the people that were actually invited. There was people um, there tending to to whatever that the food is happening. Um, there was also people outside, like I said, listening into whatever the teacher's talking about. So I'm trying to paint this background, this picture, for you guys to actually see what is happening right here. So it wasn't uncommon for people from the street or the town to come and listen in to a teacher. Like anyone could just, oh, man, that guy's really rich, but I'm just going to sit outside of their thing and just listen in. Anyone could listen. Anyone could learn. So this prostitute, we see the prostitute in verse 37 and 38. 
It says this, when a certain immoral woman or a prostitute from the city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. So this is this prostitute woman. Now this wasn't like, oh, she was walking down the street and being like, oh, look, Jesus is here. Oh, I have this super expensive perfume. No, this is something she probably like, oh, I heard about this Jesus. I think he's what he says he is. I'm going to grab, she brought this expensive perfume, walked it all the way to this Simon the Pharisee's house, went into, now this is bold now. She didn't stay on the outside. She didn't just watch from a distance. She saw Jesus and she's like, I don't know who this person is, but I need to meet him. She breaks the barrier by going into Simon um, the Pharisee's property with this alabaster jar, goes up to Jesus and kneels at his feet and starts to weep as he's still teaching now. Look, it says that right there. He was, um, verse 37, when certain immoral woman from the city heard was, um, he was eating there, she brought the beautiful alabaster jar filled with the expensive perfume, verse 38. Then she knelt behind him. Jesus didn't recognize it. He was just doing his thing. He was teaching. He was talking. He was experiencing people. And then all of a sudden, this woman's right there, crying at his feet, using her hair to wipe it. She, this, this prostitute surrendered to Jesus. How? By showing no fear. She didn't care what everyone else was thinking. This is somebody else's property. It's like... You know, having a party and you walk into that party without anything and you just go in like, ah, oh, I own the place. She had no fear. She wanted to meet Jesus. She used her tears to wash his feet. She used her hair to dry it. She used the perfume. Now, you guys are like, well, what about the perfume? What? Who cares? Now, this is an expensive perfume. Think about it. It's a prostitute. She uses perfume to help attract people. She used the perfume to help bring in the money, to bring in her power, to bring in her prestige. So she, that's everything she owns, her, her, her identity, what made her who she was. And she brings it to Jesus and she cracks it open and she starts to use it at Jesus' feet. Now, what, what about that, And Well, think about it. Have you guys ever wore flip-flops? Have you ever walked in the dirt? I, so I lived in Hawaii, um, the, the town of Waihua. Back in that day, behind my house, there was pineapple fields. So dirt for miles, red dirt. And I would play with my friends in the pineapple fields. We would ride bikes in the dirt. We would, play, we would get dirt bombs and throw it at each other. We would get so dirty... And I remember coming home one day, and I walked in the house, and my mom was like, get out. I'm like, why? You're filthy. You're attracting dirt all over the house. Get out. So I get outside. She grabs the hose, and she just goes. <laughs> and I'm like, is this abuse? <laughs> but I was filthy. My feet got super dirty. Now think about this. They didn't have shoes back in those days. They're walking around dirt with their feet dirty. They're, they're walking around in dirt. And not only that, people's feet would get really, really disgusting. <laughs> so for Jesus, this woman is going by Jesus' feet. Some of you guys don't even like feet. Some of you guys don't even want to look at feet. Some of you guys don't even want to look at your own feet. <laughs> but she goes to Jesus' feet, not like... Whoa, but she's literally face to feet, using her tears to wash his feet, using the perfume to take the calluses off, to take, to soothe and soothe his feet. What does that mean, Abel? That means that she was being vulnerable. Like, who does that? 
The only time I see something like that is at a wedding. I went to my best friend's wedding, and I, I was the one that um, did it. His name is Jawash. You guys saw him. If you last, um, not last year, but if you were on the, the live, I'm uh, not live stream, but the videos, I had him preach at one point. We did an interview thing, but I got to go to his wedding. And what he did was him and his wife washed each other's feet. At first, I was like, ugh. But then I was like, I get the symbolization. It's showing that they're surrendering to the other person. And so that woman did was vulnerable. It was intimate. It was submissive. She placed Jesus as Lord. The prostitute surrendered her identity, her power, her pride, and strength. She was saying, Jesus, if you are who you claim you are, take all of me. Now the Pharisee, on the other hand, we see in verse 39, what was his response? It says, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know that what kind of woman is touching him, she is a sinner. She is a sinner. Simon responded in an intellectual way. He came to Jesus intellectually. What do you mean, Abel? I mean, look at that response. He's thinking. He's thinking. He comes up to Jesus and he's like, do you know who's touching you? That sinful person? Simon is thinking it through. He's processing it through. Because if he didn't know that she was a sinner, then that means that he's not a prophet. <laughs> but if he does know that she is a sinner, that means Jesus is defiled. So he's starting to think through this process of who's Jesus? Why? Because look, just right there it says, if this... If you see if this, that means something like then this. If this, then this. If Abel does this, then Abel's, this must be Abel. The Pharisees came with conditions. Do you not see that, that he's already having conditions on Jesus? Jesus' response, by giving Simon the Pharisee a direct lesson, it was really interesting. Because how does Jesus respond to it? He sees, he already sees the gears going off of Jesus. I mean, going off of Simon, the Pharisee. So Jesus responds, and I love how he responds to him. It's basically like a, oh, I guess we're missing one. No, no, there we go. Yeah, Jesus responds in this way. It says this, when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said, oh yeah, sorry. Um, it's not there. Dang. All right, so verse, um, verse 41, 40 to 43, it says this. 40 to 43, it says this. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Basically, Simon was like, hey, educate me. Let's see if you can. <laughs> see if you can, Jesus. Jesus says this. Two men who owed money to a certain money lender... One own, owned him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. To, um, so he canceled the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon resp um, resp replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. And so we see this parable right here that Jesus basically says, hey, who has... If these two people had a lot of debt and they, were for, I've, and they were forgiven, who would love more? Who would love that person more? Simon responds, the person that has more that was, re, that was um, forgiven. So I want to bring up this question. Do you know your debt? In Romans 3.23, it says that we all have sinned. We all have sinned. That's me, that's you, that's Pastor Mike, that's everyone in this room. Regardless if you like it or not. If you believe in God or not, think about it. Where do we get right and wrong? If you take out God, what? Who defines right and wrong? If you take God out of the whole equation, anyone can do whatever they want. 
Do you know your debt? Do you truly know what Jesus did for you on the cross? Some of us say, yeah, but I bet you you can't even name what sin that he saved you from. Verse 47, it says this, Therefore I tell you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. This woman loved, she showed Jesus love. She showed Jesus. She wasn't afraid to come to Jesus. She wasn't afraid of what everyone else. Why? Because she understood what God has forgiven her. She understood what Jesus forgave her for. She understood that. What does that mean? The one who understands their sin, the one who recognizes their sin or debt that God saved or forgave them from. Do you think Simon the Pharisee understood what sins he had? No. The woman, the prostitute, she probably knew. Why? Because they didn't let these people come into the temple. They, they shunned them throughout the, the culture. They looked down upon these types of women or men. These people knew their sin. It's not like they needed someone to tell them. They knew it already. They probably could name that sin. They could probably describe that sin. She knew the sin and she knew how much God forgave her. She knew who Jesus, what Jesus would do. The prostitute recognized her sin. We see two responses. The Pharisee who responded in an intellectual way with conditions. We see that the Pharisee, how he responded to Jesus' actions toward the prostitute woman. I mean, he lo just reading the word, it sounded disgusting. He said, if only, she, if only Jesus knew that this woman is a sinner, he wouldn't be letting her touch him. But the woman's response was surrender. She didn't care what everyone else thought. She went to Jesus' feet and said, you said that you are God. You said that you're the way, the truth, and the life. I trust you that what you're saying is true. The prostitute woman gives up everything without conditions. The Pharisee had conditions. He didn't know what he was being saved from. Now, which response did Jesus accept? Was it the prostitute or was it the Pharisee? If you read on in verse... Um, towards the end of it, you see it right there. Verse in there. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is the, um, this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Jesus accepts the offering of this woman. He accepts the surrender of this woman. So my point for you today, this is the only point. If you take home anything, I hope it's this. Surrender to Christ. Surrender to Jesus. Oh, right there. Surrender to Jesus. Surrender to Christ. The prostitute surrendered and Jesus found her acceptable. Jesus tells her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. That day when I said, hey, Jesus, come into my life. It didn't ease my whole life up. But it helped me to walk through it with peace. Why? Because every time something difficult came to shake Abel's world, I knew I can go to Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, my world is shaking. But I know when I get onto you, my world is in peace. Only Jesus can give that peace. That peace that the prostitute was looking for. That peace, that love that the prostitute was looking for. That grace that the prostitute was looking for. That mercy that this woman was looking for. This true love that this woman was looking for. Only God can fulfill. So, do you know what God saved you from? If your answer is no, that's why you're struggling to know 
who God is. That's why Simon the Pharisee was struggling. Because he didn't understand the sin that Jesus forgave him from. God forgave him from. This woman came to him without conditions and got on her feet and said, Jesus, I don't care. Whatever it takes, I want to know you. I want to know you. And that beautiful response that Jesus says, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Let's pray, you guys. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. Father, I pray that you would work in the student's life. Holy Spirit, I unleash you today, Lord God, that you would turn the hearts, Lord God. That question of, do you know the debt that was paid? Do you know your own debt that God has forgiven? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would move, Lord God, in the students' hearts. That you would bring grace into the students' world. That they will see that you bring peace that passes all understanding. Father, I thank you that you are God. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you guys are wanting to, um, I guess, ask any questions or any thoughts about the sermon or even if you want to ask Jesus into your life, um, we have me. I didn't think this far. <laughs> but you're more than welcome. If not, you guys can hang out out into the um, area. But you are free to go. Thank you. Mahalo. God bless. See you guys next week. You're welcome.